compatibility of sodium, NAC, and lithium with some heat exchanger fluids. Here, development engineers and technicians are moving sodium bricks with tongs from the shipping container to the test pans and igniting them with an oxyacetylene blowpipe for the test fires. Strangely, it sometimes requires several minutes to get the entire surface of the molten sodium burning freely. The first material tested is ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol antifreeze, so popular for wintertime use in automobile cooling systems, was used here. The flames reached a height of approximately four feet and burned steadily until the ethylene glycol was exhausted. The next material tested is butyl alcohol, also recommended and used with some success with liquid metals. You will note how the butyl alcohol burns with less black smoke, but much higher flames than did the ethylene glycol, indicating the higher volatility of this material. This material is a silicone oil. Being more viscous than the alcohol or the ethylene glycol, it takes somewhat longer to spread over the surface of the sodium fire. The smoke is much darker and more dense than was the case with the other materials. The large volume of the smoke obscures a large portion of the reaction which was seen by the observers. The next scene will show the application of carbon tetrachloride to a sodium fire. Notice the degree of reactivity and its persistence. This is a test in which a hydraulic oil was used. The material seems to be even slower in covering the surface of the burning sodium than were some of the previous materials. One pint of liquid is applied in each test. The sodium fire contains approximately five pounds of molten metal throughout the experiments. After each test, the sodium fire is allowed to revert to normal sodium combustion, and all of the previous test material is allowed to burn off. The material burning now is kerosene, which is sometimes used to keep the sodium from exposure to air while in transit. It burns with a considerable amount of white smoke, as well as the black byproducts of the kerosene combustion. The white smoke is from burning sodium around the edge of the fire, which has not yet been covered with burning kerosene. Water is applied to the burning sodium. In the cases of water and carbon tetrachloride, as is very well shown here, the sodium fire is scattered as much as 25 feet from the pan of burning sodium. The device for applying the test materials was an inclined pipe approximately 40 feet long. The last scene shows a close-up of another application of water to the sodium fire. Witness the dramatic results of the application of a stream of water from a fire hose to a pan of NAC, the mixture of sodium and potassium. With the application of water, it explodes immediately. Next, we make a similar test on burning lithium with water.